know, what led to uh, it was just the DBs and linebackers really locking down their guys and, you know, giving us the opportunity to, you know, have the quarterback hold the ball and giving us enough time to get a three-man rush and get that sack. I mean, you know, uh, it's kind of hard getting a three-man rush and then, you know, especially from, you know, just playing two gaps and getting a sack. And, yeah. Kind of step back and look at your whole Oregon career and maybe describe it from the start to where it is now. Um... Coming here from Hawaii for the, you know, leaving the island of Hawaii for the first time was just mind blowing. Um, I came up here in January for my recruiting trip and uh, I was not prepared for the coldness. <laughs> I came up here in a t shirt, shorts, and uh, flip flops and it was not good. <laughs> I was freezing my butt off and people were just wondering how, how can I stand the cold and I just didn't have any clothes for it. <laughs> but, um, you know, as, as, as my career here went on, uh, you know, I. Um, they gave us a lot of clothing, uh, warm clothes. <laughs> um, school, at first, it was uh, difficult for me, uh, but they set us up with, um, you know, tutors and the right people to, you know, help us out along the way. And, uh, you know, I finally got my, de my degree, so you know, that's all that matters. So. And right now, it's just uh, football. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm really blessed to be here. How, how much have you improved since you've gotten here football wise? Um, you know, I, th I think I've improved a lot. I'm, uh, I've taken, I learned a lot from, you know, um, a coach before and a coach now. And I mean, two different coaches, but both with great, great personalities, great skill level. And, uh, you know, um, I think uh, being a captain, I've taken on the road, you know, just pushing our guys and, you know, keeping them up, up tempo and make sure they're finishing to the ball. And, you know, I make sure that they tell me the same thing. And, uh, you know, um, with this group, I think we created a culture that has, you know, just a tight knit group that, you know, we trust. You know, we, we respect each other. And, and, and. Why do you think the defense as a whole has been effective this year? Um, you know, I think it's because we, we've been in, in, in the you know system for so long. We, we know the play calling, like, in the back of our hand. And, and I mean, it's just uh, we just learn how to play together. And, you know, all the off-season workouts that we do are really, really bring us close. And, you know, I know I heard I remember hearing the linebackers saying that they'd hold like barbecues and uh, mm -hmm. whatnot at different uh, people's houses, and we, we sort of did the same thing as a D line. And so mm -hmm. coming together, it was just easier for us to play together. It's it like one unit. So. What were the D line gatherings? Where where uh, were they at? Um, usually they'd be held at Taylor's house, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Stetson would uh, bring you know the hamburgers, meat over, yes. and uh, you know we, we bring what we can, and then you know, it was good. You just eat, huh? That's your job. <laughs> eat, huh? <laughs> uh, what um, about your Hawaiian heritage? How does that uh, help you in football? You think, or does it? Um, I mean, it's just come, you know, coming from Hawaii, just you know, learn to respect um, you know everybody and everything. And uh, you know, when I first came up here, about taking classes about you know race and racism, and mm -hmm. you know, um, really never ex really experienced that because um, they, at my school there's really hardly black or white people and you know um it was taught by our parents you know just to respect you know treat someone as you know your own family member and so it was hard for me to you know really really engage in the class not knowing um what you know this whole thing was about or being criticized or whatever but i mean you know i love all my guys here white black mexican it, it yeah. don't matter i guess what i'm getting at is that i think uh I'm, I'm trying to look at this from a for a marcus story mm -hmm. and i think he is very kind of poised and under control, uh, and I think there's a lot of traits in that, in the, just kind of the, the culture. Oh, you mean laid back? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and but and also just uh, I don't know that much about the Hawaiian mm -hmm. culture. I was hoping you could shed some light on that because it seems like uh, family is very important and uh, being laid back and mm -hmm. all that. Can you shed some light and can you see some some similarities and? How Marcus is and how you are. I mean, to your if, if you look at, I mean, all of us are all the same. You know, he's just real laid back and you know, just really enjoy. We really just enjoy the moment and really take thing, take things in and you know, just um, and with family. I mean, always family first and you know, um, uh, like how we treat you know this football team and everyone around us. We treat them as a family and um, you know, it's, it's just. It's, is there anything unique though to the Hawaiian culture that? Maybe it's different from from others. Um, I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to say. I, I mean, I've, I've been around you know just all Hawaii guys usually, and um, 
it's, we just kind of th take things here. Yeah, I mean, we really not, don't notice anything different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How would you evaluate your play last Saturday against Washington? Uh, you stepped what, up and you were a coach. What do you, what do you mean by that? Your I mean, play, like if you were evaluating yourself. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things I could have worked on, uh, more of, uh, you know, first step, hand placement, uh, you know, more of uh, pursuit to the ball. Uh, I mean, there, there's there's a lot of things I could have worked on that game. Do you feel like that was maybe your best game? So far this season? Um, yeah, I mean, so far, I mean, I got uh, a couple sacks and a uh, tackle for a loss. I uh, can't, can't ask anything better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Playing in the D-line and especially the nose tackle, it's, it's, tell me if I'm wrong, but you guys are typically the guy to fill the gaps and open up the lanes for your <coughs> linebackers. Yeah. You know, how hard is it to, to really get people to notice? Ron Aiken said, you know, people don't watch the interior guys and, until they make a really crazy play, but do you, do you feel like this season you've been the dominant player that people are starting to say you are? Um, I really don't hear what other people say. I mean, I just go out there and play ball and, you know, I really work on just striking the center and owning, the, dominating the line of scrimmage and, you know, dominating the guy in front of me. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just out there, you know, to take on guys and stuff to run. And, you know, if there's an opportunity to get a sack, you know, I'll try and take it. And, um, you know, uh, it's been good to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the key to the guys behind you? Some of them are really thriving in the NFL. Um, you know, um, I just or, 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 or repeat that question. Sorry. I mean, you guys lose Kiko and Clay and the third pick in the draft, and it seems like the other guys have kind of stepped in, and you haven't mm -hmm. missed a beat, really. Um, you know, it's just uh, more of just communicating, and uh, like I was uh, saying earlier, that uh, you know, just uh, the off season, and you know, just mm -hmm. getting together, and you know, just getting to know each other, and really getting a tight knit group is, you know, what what made us, you know, play how we are, we're playing now. You know, just feel like we're in, you know, just one motion and just one unit. So, so you, were you guys pretty confident going into the season then? Yeah. Without having seen those guys yeah, fill I mean, those roles? We we, it, it, we trust the guys behind us, yeah. and we hope they, you know, they trust us on filling in the gaps, and you know, we try to take the pressure off of them by taking, you know, more than one guy, so yeah. <laughs> so they can make the plays. But you know, so. you outscored Washington 14-0 in the fourth quarter. Do you think that's just the depth shining through as the game wore on? Um, yeah, you know, we just try and rotate guys as much as we can, and uh, you know, as the game wears on, then you know the the higher um, score we're up and you know the younger guys get to go in and really you know get a feel for what you know they're going to be they're going to be um, be in when we're gone so you talked about Wade, when in the fourth quarter it was a critical time the ducks come down they score a touchdown the defense comes back out and put the clamps on washington how did that happen how did you guys make such a dominant statement then um, you know, we just, we really didn't change anything in the play calling. We just kept on going out there and grinding, grinding, grinding away. And just, you know, I'm so happy we made plays. And, you know, we go over our, our keys and, and whatnot that we just had the right place at the right time.